Hello friends, welcome back. I hope you're doing well. Hope you're enjoying all the new features that came out in the most recent update to Luminar Neo. And of course, I hope you're enjoying the videos I've been producing about these features. One of the most, uh, I think, most important features, certainly the best feature in my opinion, is luminosity masking. It's something I've used for years in other products, and I use it now on every image in Luminar Neo. And the reason I like it is because it gives you so much targeted control. And as I develop my editing style over the years, I found that in the early days, I wasn't really taking very good control of things. I was just kind of moving sliders and it was impacting everything. And that's where masking comes into play. And for me, more specifically, luminosity masking, simply because it gives you that much control. And I just love it. And we're going to talk about that in this video. And one of the key things that I like to talk about and do in my photos and in my videos is work on color. I love color. I can't help it. I just like color. I like bold colors. I like saturated colors. But I don't want to go too far. And that's one of the things in Luminar. So many great tools. It's easy if you use um, a lot of these tools to get too much color too quickly and not really and kind of lose control of it, for lack of a better term. And that's where I think luminosity masking comes in really handy is it's going to keep you from overdoing things because lots of tools and uh, easy to move sliders. And uh, I honestly think that we get a little desensitized to the color if we're sitting here staring at it for a while and working on it. Well, luminosity masks are great at kind of pulling you back uh, a little bit from the, from the edge of going too far with color. So we're going to work on this photo today. It's a landscape. It was a sunrise. This is an expo a, a three exposure HDR. So that's the base HDR. It was three different exposures. I already merged them before this video. And then what I did do is also go into develop and erase. So I erased that little uh, drain pipe. Nobody wants a drain pipe in a beautiful sunrise landscape. So I erased that. I erased some spots. And then I fixed the verticals and played a little bit with the light. That's what my photo looks like now after develop uh, and erase. Uh, so three exposure HDR, just a little bit of work done. And what I want to do is get into color and color harmonies. It's my favorite tool uh, for color. There's so many different things here. There's four different sections. And that's what I'm talking about. You can just do a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there. And the next thing you know, you're like, oh, I really got a lot of color. And that's it's four tools within one. But you could go from there into golden hour or toning. And then you really start to get a lot of color. And like I said, that's why I like to use luminosity mask because it helps you control where it goes. It also helps you fade it into other areas. And I think it keeps you from going over the top. So what I want to do here is, you know, I'm going to go ahead and just make some adjustments. I want to bring up the brilliance and warmth. I want the warm colors to be a little warmer. And I want the cool colors to be a little cooler. I think in the shadows, I like a little bit of blue in my shadows. In my midtones here, I think I want a little bit of red to kind of bring up some of that sunrise. Uh, and then also in my highlights, I think I want a tiny bit of red and maybe a tiny bit of magenta. And all of a sudden, you can see it's pretty colorful. In fact, I think I'll take the red out of the highlights just because it's getting to be a, a bit too much, even for me. I do like my color. But having said all that, I mean, it looks pretty nice, I think. I'm a little biased because it's my photo, but um, it's too much color. And also, let me turn this off. If you look at the grasses on the far bank and all that below the trees, they're really getting a lot of red. And there's nothing wrong with them having some red if you're going to have red in the sky and the water. But for me, the show is the sky and the water. It's also happening to the grasses in the bank here in the foreground. It's, those yellow areas are really picking up a lot of red, as you can see before and after. And so this is where I like to come in with a luminosity mask and take control over that and apply it to certain tonal areas. Uh, and that's what's so great about luminosity masks is you can just uh, select those areas. So what I want to do is I want to keep it in the highlight uh, and some of the midtones. I don't really want it so much in the shadows. Um, I really like it in the sky and the water. So something about like that, you can see I'm covering the sky really well. I'm covering the water really well. But I'm not covering the reflection of the trees because that's in shadow. So it's it's excluded from the luminosity mask. By the way, if you're not sure how all this works, check out that video where I talk about this tool in detail and show you how to use it. So I'm just kind of jumping into the edit here. But you can see I'm excluding a lot of this land over here and the trees. And I'm excluding most of the foreground grasses. It's just going to pick up a little bit. So that gives me a lot more control. And now when you look at it, a lot more subtle implementation of color in this mask and across this photo. So before and after, not quite as intense as it was in the uh, pre-mask version. And now that I've done that, I'm going to use this mask again. So you can just go into the masking menu, mask actions, and copy. And what I want to do is go down here to the landscape category and get landscape and go click on mask. 
mask actions, and paste. And now I've just copied that luminosity mask because once you make it, if you like it and it fits the tonal areas you want, just copy and paste, right? Just recycle. So if I click show, same mask as you can tell. And what I'm going to do is go into golden hour and I'm going to give this like a 20. Uh, now I'm bringing up some of those warmer tones and I like it and I do want the sky and the water to pop. I just want to make sure that I have a little bit of control over it. So I've done that and I think that looks pretty good. A little extra bump in warmth. So before and after. And now that I've done that, I'm going to keep this same luminosity mask and I'm going to go to Accent AI and here I'm going to go in and I'm going to paste it. So paste. And if I show you that one more time, same mask, right? I'm just using it. Lather, rinse, repeat. And what I'm going to do is come over here and give that a 15 or 20. Something about like that. Just a little bit of umph. And if you look at the before and the after, it's just a little extra something. And that's something I recommend with Accent AI. And in fact, I made a recent video about using luminosity masking with Accent AI, which is right there if you want to check it out. So now that I've done that, I feel like I've got pretty good control over the color. And what I want to do is uh, I want to play with that boat a little bit. So I'm going to start with Structure AI. I'm going to go to Masking. And this is where the other new feature that I'm really enjoying a lot, Object Select. I come in here. I hover. I've got the boat selected. That is so, uh, and I click it to select it. That's so much quicker and easier than the way it used to be in the past where I'd have to go in and kind of mask all that in individually, like by hand with a brush. Uh, not, not fun. Uh, now it's quick and easy and accurate, I might add. So I'm done with that. I'm actually going to brighten it a little bit. So I'm just going to do the same thing. Object select. Now I could have copied that mask, but honestly, it's so quick. It's just as quick to just go get another one uh, and redo it than it is to, uh, you know, go in and, and copy and paste and all that. So I'm going to brighten it just a little bit. I want to bring up the visibility of that boat a little bit. Maybe a tiny bit of contrast. And I think I'm going to bring uh, temperature down a little bit and saturation of vibrance down a little bit as well. I don't want it overdone. Something a little bit like that. A little bit brighter, but not quite as much color pop. So before and after. And now that I've done that, I'm going to do something I do all the time, which is smooth out the sky and water. And one of the things I've found is that Object Select is really good at selecting skies and water. So mask. In the past, I would go to Mask AI, but honestly, it feels like it takes longer. So I've been going to Object Select, and then I just come in, I hover, I got the sky. Now, it's not perfect around the trees. Uh, I do recommend going in a little uh, with a brush along those edges and kind of smoothing that out. But hover and select, there's the water, and that's selected. That's both of the, I mean, I did both of those quicker than I think I would identify uh, just one of them with, uh, with Mask AI. So I think Object Select, I mean, hats off to the Luminar team. It's, it's pretty fantastic. So there's that. So just a little bit of negative structure. And that's just personal preference of me liking to smooth out skies and water. And now that I've done that, I think I'll just top this off with a little bit of mystical just to give it a little bit of that moody, kind of romantic glow, sunrise kind of, you know, I don't know what you call it, mysticalness. Uh, it's mystical, so we'll call it mysticalness. But before and after, it adds a little bit of shadow, a little bit of contrast, brightens the bright parts a little bit, darkens the dark parts a little bit. It's the contrast I'm talking about. But it just creates a nice little mood, right? Just don't confuse mood with the mood tool, which is how you use LUTs. I know, uh, so many words that kind of overlap. But anyway, before and after. And if you look at the entire before and after, before and after, right? Before and after. Uh, quite a bit nice color pop. The light's nicely balanced. A lot of that was the HDR, of course. But it's really the color that uh, I think makes the image, bringing up that sky and the water with just a little touch of that warmer color going into some areas like the grasses and that sort of thing without oversaturating the image and making it too much. And that's where luminosity masks come in so handy. So using them with color tools like Color Balance and, and Color Harmony, everything in Color Harmony. Uh, and then, of course, Accent AI and Golden Hour as well. It just really gives you that fine, controlled touch to give a nice little pop to color without overdoing it. Check it out. Try it on your images, my friends. One more time before and after. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon. You guys take care. And until the next time, adios.